Hello, everybody. Hello, ladies. Hello, gents. Palm Springs, Cindy, and little Lily. Little Lily. Oh my gosh, I've got so much to share with you guys about this little pumpkin head. But first of all, you gonna look at anybody? Huh? You gonna look at anybody? Huh? I think she's tired. Is it time for bed? Oh, baby. Oh my goodness. I have this little, little vest thing on her. Can you say hello? Look at this little angel. Oh my gosh. She is so wonderful. You gonna give me a kiss? You gonna kiss me? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, look at her. Mm -hmm. Can you say hello? Can you say hello? Oh my goodness, you've got to get a little haircut because you're not having much fun seeing out of this long hair. Oh, sweet girl. Yes. Look how long her arms are. Okay. Oh, I just don't even want to put her down. I don't even want to put you down. Well, let me tell you about my little baby girl here. I have been watching training videos on potty training and she's got the sharpest little teeth. And so of course she's um, teething and biting me, biting everything, nipping at my ankles, pulling, <laughs> pulling at my dress and clothes. So of course that is not fun and um, she's so relaxed right now. So I've been watching videos on how to stop that and, um, and she's been very good about going potty on the potty pads. Now it happened by accident because I noticed she was, um, she was going to the bathroom on these two, well actually two rugs in particular. So I thought, you know, well, she, you know, she's, going to the bathroom on those rugs, let her go. And I was thrilled that she had identified a place. So I put the one rug in more of a central location. And I noticed, you know, that's, that's where she was going to the bathroom. So uh, I picked the other rug up. Actually, I picked both rugs up, washed them, put them away. And I put potty pads down in their place. And so I, and, and she's been going on the potty pads. I'm like blown away. So she must have been going on potty pads before I got her, or must, you know, have have known what they were for. I take her out like every hour, sometimes that's too soon and she won't go. Usually when I take her out, she will go to the bathroom right away, like within 10, 15 seconds. And if she does not, then she starts playing and running around and everything. So then I think, oh, well, she doesn't really, I don't think she has the urge. So then I take her inside and 80% and of the time she goes the minute we come back inside. And um, other times, you know, she'll wait and then I'll take her back out like 20 minutes later, 15 minutes later, and then she'll go. So I'm working on potty training. I'm not being, you know, I don't know how successful we are other than the fact that she is recognizing potty pads right now. So my house continues to be a disaster with potty pads and doggy toys and, and water. I had water bowls set out in a few areas because it's so hot here and I wanna make sure she's hydrated. And, um, and so I've got bowls sitting around the house, but bottom line, you know, it's, it's fine because what are you gonna do? You've got a little baby here, gotta take care of her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she does sleep on my bed with me and I set, I actually don't, well, I do set my alarm sometimes, but other times I just sort of wake up and I take her out to go potty and she goes potty right away, back in bed. She has, um, she, she jumps off the, <laughs> jumps off, she jumps off my bed on her own and will um, go to that rug to go potty and find a chew toy on the ground. Okay, I'm gonna put you down. Oh, you, you say goodbye? <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> she hasn't finished her dinner tonight. And speaking of dinner, speaking of doggy dinner, I, um, because I've been watching all these dog training videos, I discovered this one family that shares their story of how they train their dogs. They're, they're breeders and they have 
um, you know, they're, they know how to do this. And man, they, they videotape it and they, they have it down. But one of the things they said that they, that they do once the mother is gone, they start feeding their puppies a mixture of kibble and goat's milk. Evidently, goat's milk is the most, um, it imitates mother's milk from a dog the best. It smells the same, it has the same flavor. So they mix the, um, they put the kibble in a blender and pound, make it like a powder. Then they, they put the kibble in, with, they pour the goat's milk on the kibble and they, they make it like an applesauce consistency. With, well, actually with a little more of the liquid, a little more goat's milk than kibble so that the dogs begin to lick the, uh, to drink the goat's milk and then they end up eating the, the kibble. And then they eventually go from uh, goat's milk to water on the kibble and then less water on the kibble and then no water on the kibble. And then the dogs are eating the regular kibble and able to chew it. Okay, she's over there. Well, what did I do with the fan? Did the fan turn off? Um, so I thought that was interesting. So anyway, I bought Shel uh, Shelby, I bought Lily some uh, goat's milk and I put it out in one of her water bowls and I mean to tell you, she loved it. She I just also laughed I bought a crate. It's not really a crate, it's like more of a gate. Um, just sides that you can put into different shapes, make it bigger, stretch it out, make it smaller, no top on it. And I will put her in there with potty pads um, when I need to go, when I need to leave for a couple hours, which I've only done, I think, once. So um, I did take her to the vet and she's, uh, she does not have all of her vaccines yet. They have to be spaced out but she's underway and the vet said she looks very healthy. I had to take in um, like sam stool samples and all that kind of stuff. And so anyway, she has a clean bill of health. Pretty soon I'll be able to really kind of take her out and about, but I'm still being very careful of that right now while she's so young and not completely vaccinated. I'm losing my voice because it's kind of late at night. Um, and then, okay, let's see, anything else about Lily that I have to tell you? She is hysterical. I mean, because it's so hot here right now, I take her out in the morning, like between around eight o'clock, eight, 8.30. I take her out in the morning in the backyard and we play, she runs, she gets in these puppy spurts that are hysterical. She runs around the yard, oh my goodness, great, as fast as she can. She'll run one way one time, run another way another time, run in between the bushes and, well, anyway, it's so cute. Then when she finishes running, she just pops right next to me. And then she, you know, she gets, catches her breath again and then she's up and she does it again. So she is, uh, she's enjoying that. I'm enjoying watching her. Now the other night, I'm gonna say it was Friday night, kind of a scary thing happened. I got a call, it was a, probably around, um, it was around 9.30 at night, and I got a call from my daughter who was very, very upset. And she said that her dog, her dog's name is May. And May, she, that my daughter was walking with her dog to, the, to her uh, mailbox, and out of nowhere came this German Shepherd. In fact, I think I had this, I did a video of this on at my daughter's house. Well, anyway, um, so my daughter and I had to go, she, she just said she needed some support. So I said, I'll be right over, and I was. Because it takes me not quite an hour to get to my daughter's house. And so I got there and I was glad that I went because she was quite upset. Her dog had two, well, we, we really couldn't tell because uh, the May was not letting us get close enough to look at her, but, at any rate, we knew she was injured. She was not vomiting. The blood had stopped. Bottom line, she had two puncture wounds from the dog's bite. And um, and I'm not gonna say any more right now because I believe I have this story on a, on a video that I took at my daughter's house. So I'll connect that with this. But I was there for two days. I was there with her for two days while her dog was in the hospital. And, um, but everything's gonna be okay, thank goodness. And I took, 
Lily with me and she thought she was the cat's meow over at my daughter's condo. She loved it over there. It's just hysterical. Oh my goodness, it's so fun to watch a puppy sort of discover the world. Okay, let's see what else I wanna tell you. I, um, the other day, uh, it was Saturday. In fact, it was that night that, that I got a call from my daughter. Saturday, uh, we had a block party, which was so nice. Some it, four families actually down the street put together a block party, gave out invitations to everybody on the block, and they opened their garage and asked everybody to bring a light hors d'oeuvre and their own libation. And they had some tables set up. They had full on food. I mean, they had pizza and chicken and um, heavy good hors d'oeuvres. Like, oh, and they also had hot dogs, uh, great desserts. Well, anyway, it was very fun. And I got to meet a lot of the neighbors that I had not met before. So, of course, I loved that. And the, the people that live very, like, on either side and directly across the street, they're not real, um, they're, they're not real out. Well, they don't really come out that much, let me just say. And so it was nice to meet people that, you know, that go, that play pickleball, that are at the pool, that, that are out and about. And that invited me over to their house and I invited them over to my house. So anyway, it was People drove their golf carts over there or walked over there. They brought their dogs. Anyway, it was really a fun afternoon and I'm glad I went. And um, you know my friend Brooke that has the Just Us skin product line? Well, she you don't know this about her and she's gonna be coming on kind of on a regular regular basis, I'm hoping. We're gonna get we're gonna plan and get that together. But in the meantime, um, this does not look great because Miss Lily got her teeth on it. But Brooke, this is Brooke, who has Just Us Cosmetics. Her book is named Nothing to Write Home About. This is what Lily did. And I'm kind of trying to cover that up. And it's a true story. And just to let you know, um, it was about 1977. She was about 26 years old and she was a victim of very serious domestic abuse. So this is her story. It's very well written. It takes place mostly in the Los Angeles area. Um, she is involved in the comedy writing business and she is living and mixing with comedy writers and going to the comedy store and she's writing. And so anyway, she's a writer. <laughs> she's, she, she makes face products, skin products, and she's also an author. But it's very, very good. And so she's going to, I'm gonna have her on, and I want her to tell you about her experience because, you know, unfortunately, domestic violence and domestic abuse is, is out there. And I know um, when I was working with the homeschooling community, my experience was many, I'm not gonna say many, but a handful of my, of my families, the mothers were being um, domestically abused by their spouses. And part of that was the reason they chose to homeschool. Well, maybe they didn't, but their husbands wanted them to homeschool. They didn't want their wives pretty much out of their sight. And the, the men would even come to the meetings, the homeschool meetings, when really my office was tiny and really only one adult could fit, me and another adult and child. But and on field trips, the fathers as well as the mothers came, but oftentimes the mothers were bruised on their face, bruised on their arms. They tried to hide it with sunglasses and hats and makeup, but ultimately, you know, I knew and they knew I knew. And as several of them and I became friends or got to know one another just through the homeschooling experience and me being the teacher and giving the, you know, guiding the parent to help them, teach their child successfully at home, um, you know, they began to confide. And also one of the things my office did, my branch of education where I was teaching through the alternative ed branch, they also sent teachers to uh, a battered women's shelter in town. And so they tried to keep, 
I'm not even gonna say the name of it, but you know, the address was, I had to just give the name to my administrator because even I was not told the address of where the shelter, where the battered woman shelter was, but they actually had a school room and everything there. In addition to that, I also um, taught at a homeless shelter. I went there, it was like an apartment complex and you evidently the families could stay there for six weeks i think it was and then what what i did there were two teachers assigned we would go after school hours and help the children do their homework help sort of translate what the child's schoolwork was was about to their mother or father whoever they were living with and we were we were a little bit more than a tutor or a classroom teacher, we were we were sort of a connection between the child, the family, and their and the public school that they attended, because the, the regular school bus. No, I think they had a van that took the kids from the shelter, the homeless shelter, to the public school. Lots of times, the children, you know, if they were um, homeless, they did not have birth certificates and health records and you know, those kind, that kind of paper trail, their, their vaccination records, they did not have that kind of paper trail to give to the school district to say, can we enroll? And so, you know, there were special circumstances that were made for those families. And one of those special circumstances was sending a teacher, myself and another gal, to their apartment where they were living after school hours. I think we were there two hours every day, Monday through Friday. I eventually, I job shared it with the other gal. So I think I did two nights, she did three nights. But uh, anyway, that's, you know, I'm totally off track here. <laughs> but, but that, you know, I thought that was interesting that our that school districts do accommodate, do want to accommodate and, and include, you know, all the kids, no matter their circumstances. Okay, so this, I'm going to have Brooke share more about this book. You're, I think you're going to find it extremely interesting. And, and my mother continues to come along. She's on some new medication that's making her feel pretty, pretty much, a lot stronger. So, so that's good news. And I, unfortunately, I was not able to stay with her last weekend, last Sunday and Monday because of my daughter's dog. I was really taking care of that situation. So let's see if I have anything else. Oh, I, I went for the first time in a long time. I went to Home Goods yesterday. I put Lily in her crate. I kind of needed a little time off from her. Oh, she's just playing with this rug over here. And they had, um, you know, I'm always, oh, I, I bought a beautiful tray. I think it's still in my car. Otherwise, I would show you. Uh, I'm looking for, I'm going to need a new rug because this rug's, even though I bought a rug shampooer, this rug's getting pretty, mm, I, I, I'll be glad to eventually get a new rug. I think when the least potty tray. She's 11 weeks now, 11 weeks. She was born March 22nd. Um, so anyway, I'm, and I'm also looking for some chairs. I want to get rid of these two big white chairs and get smaller chairs, but we shall see. And uh, my daughter is in a position right now where she is, well, I want her to, to make a few changes to her condo. <laughs> don't, don't ask me, but you know, it's her condo. So there. Um, okay, I watched something that was very good. The, it, the most beautiful woman in Jerusalem. I think that was the name of it on Netflix. It ended and I was ready for the next one to come on, you know, like five, four, three, two, one, and it starts, but it didn't. So that's the, that's the end of it, I guess for a while, but there are 33 episodes or something like that. It, it's, I think it, it um, started playing in, Israel or Britain or over over there um, a couple of years ago and now Netflix just got a hold of it but it's very good um, it's interesting different let's see what else oh and I also watched this movie today called denial and it was very it was good it was different um, it was about this man who denied that there was ever a Holocaust and about this 
young woman who was a history teacher, university level, and she taught about the Holocaust. So he ended up suing her, and they had the trial in England. Well, anyway, you've got to watch. You've got to watch it. It's family friendly, and it, but it was good. It's it's really about the justice system, and a subject that really tugs at everybody's heart. And it did. Have I seen anything else? Oh, something else I watched, and it was good. It's called Tin Badge. It's not necessarily family friendly, but it's uh, there are a lot of episodes and I think three seasons, but it's a nice binge watch if you're sick or, you know, you just want to be lazy for a while. It was good. Nobody that I remember that was in it. So, you know, I can't recommend it because of any certain actors. But, so 10 Star and for those, I also, something else was by me, The English Game. I have recommended that before. But if you have not seen The English Game, it's very good. And I believe it's family friendly. So catch that if you can. <laughs> Lose my voice. I don't have anything to drink right here. So, okay, I need to get this video up. I am uh, late in my videos because of this uh, dog hospital situation. And so I'll be... Um, I have a couple things I want to talk about, so I'm, I'm going to be making, making a few videos sort of back to back. I hope you don't mind. Okay, P.S. I love you guys. Mwah. Thanks for watching. If you have not, please subscribe. It would mean a lot. And uh, until our next conversation.